I'm going to share with you before I read the text, and share what the Lord's put on my heart. I want to remind you that 800, a little over 800 years before it happened, Isaiah prophesied of the coming of the Messiah. Other Old Testament prophets prophesied of the coming of the Messiah. Years went by. They were no different than we are. They were kept wondering, is when's the Lord coming? When's the, the promised Messiah going to get here? When will it be? Year after year, generation after generation. I want you to remember that as we look into what the Lord is saying to us tonight. So, Father, I thank and praise you for the privilege of preaching your gospel. Again, as I stand before this congregation, I acknowledge that in myself, I am nothing. Without you, I can do nothing. Therefore, I'm asking for the next few minutes of time that you would grant unto your servant the ability to preach the message that you have put upon my heart. May the Holy Spirit go before me, prepare all of our hearts to receive with understanding what the Spirit is saying to the church in this hour. I ask it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome all of those that are streaming our service this morning. It's a privilege to be able to share God's word with you. And we trust that you listen to the message tonight. The Lord will speak of something to your heart as well. Revelation chapter 12, beginning, I want to read verse 11 and 12. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye the heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. With your permission, I want to reread verse 12, and I ask you to listen carefully what's being said. Therefore, rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the, of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. I want you to notice this. Therefore rejoice ye that are in heaven and that dwell in them. This setting of scripture, this setting of scripture, we the church are already in heaven. This setting of scripture, we are already in heaven. That's why it's telling us you that are in heaven rejoice. We're already there. For us, the battle is over. Okay, the battle, of the, we have won. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, have, has brought us through. And we're rejoicing and enjoying the promise that he made for us. Now remember I said to you that when it when prophesied that Jesus was going to be coming, the Messiah was going to be coming, several years went by and they asked, when is it happening? Is he coming? When is it going to be? The day and hour in which you and I are living today People are asking the same king. I can remember from the time I was little, raised in the church, I have heard that Jesus is coming back. The rapture is going to take place. Years and years and years, people are asking that question. But the Bible tells us he's coming. We need to know and understand. Just as he came the first time, Jesus is coming again. So let's think about it. Think about us being in heaven. What's it going to be like? What is heaven going to be like? The Bible just gives us a little glimpse of what heaven will be. Streets of pure gold. The Lord is building a mansion. These things we can read in the scripture. But we really don't understand or know what's going to be taking place. What are we going to do when we get to heaven? We don't know. But God has it all planned out. And it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be marvelous. We think of some of the, I think, I think of some of the most beautiful places that Ruth and I have been able to go to and see. 
places in Hawaii, places here in, in the United States. One of my favorite places here in America is Yosemite. I love to go there to see all of the beauty of it. And sometimes when I'm just thinking about it, in my mind I can picture that river that I love to fish. Sitting under those trees and fishing that river. I can remember the time that I hiked to the very top. I wanted to find out where that waterfall is coming from. So I decided one day I'm going to go up and find it. So I, I hiked for I don't know how many miles, but I went up, up, over rocks, over logs, and finally came to a huge lake. Clear, clear water, beautiful water. And was it cold? And that was falling, rolling down, and I could watch stand there at the edge of the lake and watch it falling over, going down to the river below. It was beautiful. It was so beautiful, and I was in such awe, but I just threw my hands up and said, God, you are awesome. Your creation is wonderful. There are many beautiful places here on earth, but heaven is going to be much more. We can't imagine what it's like, but it's going to be much more. Think about it. No more sin. No sin whatsoever. Never again will we have to look upon the devastation caused by sin. Think of it especially the day and hour in which we're living in, when there just seems to be absolutely no morals. There seems to be absolutely no law. They're even putting so much pressure on our police officers now that many of them are not allowed to make traffic stops. Look at how many people are taking advantage of that. Running red lights, traffic accidents are more now because they will not let the police officers be police officers. And it's going to get worse. But they, in heaven, it's not going to be any of that. No ruined lives. No broken homes. No exploited children. No broken bodies. No broken hearts. No shattered hearts. Monday, I had the privilege of attending a fellowship with several ministers. We called a meeting for our, the ministers in our area. Had the privilege of celebrating with them. And our presbyter for, for our San Diego section asked us, have you heard what's going on in India? Well, I was asked that same question Saturday when I attended the district meeting. One of the ministers, you, we, all of us know him. He's been here to preach for us several times. He's from, been to India, India and served with David Grant in India. And he asked me, have you heard what's going on in India? And while he was starting to tell me, somebody interrupted that was standing there and started talking about something else, and he never got back to tell me what was going on. But Monday, sitting at the table, our presbyter said, have you heard what's going on in India? He said, something has happened in India that has never happened in the world before. Not since Adam and Eve has never happened in the world. We said, what are you talking about? He said, India has closed down all of the red light districts in India. India, the government of India uh, helped support them, built houses for them and all to practice their trade because they were getting huge kickbacks from it. But all of a sudden, the government said, no more. They shut it down. They turned them out of their houses, told them, you're all on your own. You take your children and do what you can. But they've shut it down. Think of it. What a joy. Now, the Assemblies of God has several homes that we, we, the churches have raised and helped to, to build for those ladies. That they would uh, win them out of the prostitution, get them, they'd take them home and let them live in those homes. Most of those, many, I should say, many of those ladies that were shut down now have gone to the Christian homes. Several of them have given their heart to the Lord. One of them in particular they was talking about, the Lord has called her into the ministry. Think what's going on. God is taking care of things. But a place so ridden in immorality, the government completely shut it down. We sat around the table talking about it and said, would to God that that would happen here in America. 
that God would shut, God would shut all that stuff down. But in heaven, we don't have to worry about it. No more sin whatsoever. No more ruined lives. No more broken homes. No exploited children. And that's one of the most profitable things in America today is exploited children. Children that are being sold into prostitution, made sex slaves. Okay. One of these days, that's all going to be over. Never will we have to hear it or face it again. It was another day, just like all the others. Okay. Problems, sin, ungodliness, violence, oppression, okay. doubt and unbelief. Cruel and unfair, unfair treatment by the Roman soldiers. To be sure, there was a remnant of believers. But in the midst of that, all of the things that were going on, very similar to what's happening in our world today. <clears throat> Only I believe that our world today is worse because there's more of us. Okay. But all that same stuff going on. People crying out day and night. Where is the promise? I wonder tonight as I look upon those of you here, I wonder how many of you have been asked at one time or another, I've heard that promise all my life. Where's the promise? When's it going to happen? When is Jesus going to come? I've had people ask me, is it really going to happen? We've heard it all of our life. Is it really going to happen? Okay. When, when is it going to happen? Okay. <clears throat> I ask you to turn your Bibles with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. I want to read verses 8 through 11. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The Savior. I ask you to think, try to picture this in your mind. It's night. The shepherds are out in the field taking care of the sheep. I believe that there's a nice fire going. And they're sitting around the fire just talking to each other, sharing, probably cutting up like we do when we're out and playing with fire and stuff. Okay. Never thinking that they're going to get a message. And all of a sudden, while they're talking, while their minds are no telling where, an angel appears to them. Can you imagine what that would have been like? The brightness of the, of the glory of the angel. And then telling them, I bring, fear not, I bring good news to you. Good news that will be to all people. The promise that you've been waiting for. The promise that you've been asking, is it going to happen? The Christ that you're looking for, the promised Messiah, he's here. This day, he was born this day. Can you imagine the joy? They were so excited when they, all of a sudden the host of heaven is singing and worshiping. When they ended, the shepherds were so excited. They said, let us, let us just go and see this great sight. They left the sheep that they're supposed to be taken care of. And they went to see the baby Jesus. Just like it was promised, that day finally came. Unannounced, he just appears. He's here. It's been over 2,000 years. Over 2,000 years. And we're, every day we've been hearing it. Every day. Throughout all of those years. Okay, people questioning. People looking for it. Wondering, will it happen? Okay. Then they get this announcement. I want to share something with you to think about. Thirty-three and a half years later, another announcement was made. Thirty-three and a half years after that first announcement, he is here. Another announcement was made. 
greatly, an announcement with, which greatly affects you and me today. The announcement that was made. Acts chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. Acts chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. And while they, now the, Jesus has risen from the dead. He's appeared to the disciples and above 500 other people. He's walking the road with the disciples. He's talking with them, instructing them. And all of a sudden, while he's talking to them, the Bible said, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, while he's talking to him, Jesus begins to rise up into heaven. And they're standing there with their mouths open, looking into the heaven and watching Jesus ascend to, to out of sight. And all of a sudden, Two angels stood by them in white apparel. And they said, which all said, You men of Galilee, why stand you gazing into the heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. The promise, the proclamation of that promise fit, is for every one of us. Jesus that rose into heaven is coming again on the clouds as the disciples saw him go. We've heard it. We've read it in our Bibles. We've heard messages preached about it. We believe it in our heart. You believe it or you wouldn't be here tonight. We believe it in our heart. But the question is when? When? Jesus told us to watch and be waiting. To watch and to be waiting. To not slacken, but to watch and be ready. To be ready for his coming. I know that Ruth and I talk about it quite a bit. And we both say to each other in different times, I wish it were today. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. With all the pain and all the suffering, and all the hurt that is going on. When we see our people here at Bethany, when we get a phone call and someone has been hurt or someone is sick or a big problem, our hearts just go out. As we pray for them, we're just praying, Lord, please come. Please come. Don't let any of the rest of them get sick. When this virus went around and is going around, I should say, we pray Psalm 91. When I come into the sanctuary, many times I sit there and read Psalm 91 to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I'm reading this to you today as my prayer. And I ask him, do not let that verse 10 tells us, no plague shall come near your dwelling. And I ask him, Lord, don't let this plague come to any one of the family of Bethany Assembly. Don't let it come near us. And we pray it. And I'm sure you're praying this as well for to be, the church to be protected you to be protected, your family be protected. But one of these days, he's going to come. And I believe with all of my heart that it's going to be very soon. Very soon. The question is, are we really watching and waiting for him? Do we even think about it? Yesterday, I stepped out of the house and I looked up and there was this most beautiful white cloud just like a steeples billowing up into the heavens, huge. And just as all around it, blue and blue sky clear, no other cloud, just that one column. And I told Ruth, Connie, come and look at this. It was bright, it was beautiful. I said, maybe that's going to be the cloud. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Do those thoughts go to your mind? Do you ever think about, could this be the day? Is he really coming today? Could it be today? See? Our world, just like it was when Jesus came, our world is full of sin, ungodliness, lawlessness, violence, disobedience. Okay? Violence and disobedience is the order of the day. You cannot listen to the news or read your newspaper. This morning I did for a purpose. I read the sea, what kind of crime had been committed over the past week. In the paper today, there were three people killed with guns, one person stabbed to death, 
person just walked up behind her, a complete stranger, pulled a knife out and just started stabbing, reached over it says, and started stabbing her. People yelling at him. He just kept it and all of a sudden he dropped her and ran off. She died at the scene. Violence, violence all over the nation, all over the world, violence going on. Okay. Today, today's headline, violence rages, rages in the Holy Land. Enemies are surround them, wanting to annihilate Israel. Folks, all things are ready for his appearance. All things are ready. There does, there's not, a, not another Bible prophecy that has to be fulfilled before the coming of the Lord. I believe it's going to be very soon. There is a remnant crying out day and night. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. A remnant all over the, actually all over the world. People that are true believers, that are just ready, crying out, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. How long will it be before he answers that prayer? We have a promise that we quickly be fulfilled. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I want to look at verse and it's a very familiar portion of scripture. But I, Paul is speaking. People are asking him questions. They're asking him questions about, well, what about those that have already died? The believers that already died, what's going to happen to them? Paul answers for us. He said, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. In other words, which have died. That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe, I want to draw your attention to that. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Verse 18, please. Okay. The dead in Christ shall rise. Folks, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Does it bring comfort to your heart when you hear that? When you're thinking and reading it to yourself or just reading it from the Bible, does it bring comfort to your heart to know that all that's going on in the world today is not going to last forever? Soon, soon the Lord is coming. Okay. We have a promise that will be quickly fulfilled. And I just shared with you, first Thessalonians, it's going to happen just like we find it. I was talking to someone the other day and we were talking about the Lord and I said, every word that God has spoken will be accomplished. It will be fulfilled. Every promise he's given will be kept. God never has failed. He never will fail. The promises he made are yea and amen. That means yes and so be it. They're going to be fulfilled. The one I just shared with you is going to be fulfilled. Are we ready? Are we ready for it? So I want to say to you tonight, just a few minutes. Today, I, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the true church. The promise that the angel spoke to the shepherds, said, I bring good joy to, which shall be to all people. This promise will be just to the church, just to the true believers. Behold, he cometh. He's coming for his church, just as he promised. And I have thought about that, and today going over this and thinking over it. A question came into my mind. Will there be, 
Will there be a true church meeting here this coming Sunday? Will there be? You see, we don't know. Jesus could come tonight. He could come tomorrow. He could come before next Sunday. And if he does, will there be a church service here? And if so, who will be here? Who will be here? You see, when that rapture takes, when the rapture takes place, all the church, all the true believers are going to be taken to heaven. There are going to be many, many that have attended church through their lives that have never really surrendered to the Lord. Never given their heart to the Lord. When the rapture takes place and they realize that they're left behind. I believe that the churches will be filled. People trying to, to cry out to the Lord. And as I say that, I want to remember, remind you. You remember when God told Noah to build the ark. He supplied everything that was needed. But he told Noah, you build it. Noah built the ark. God gathered all the animals and they put them in the ark. People mocked him. They made fun of him. They went by and taunted him. 100 years building that ark. 100 years and all the time he's building it, he's telling them about God. Telling them about promising of Jesus. He preached the gospel to them that day. But one day, God said, Noah, get in the ark. God shut the door. Noah didn't shut the door. God shut the door. The Bible says, when God shuts a door, no man can open it. When he opens a door, no man can shut it. God shut the door on that ark. As the waters began to come, the rains poured down, the fountains of the deep broke open, and the water began to rise. All of a sudden, the people realized he wasn't crazy after all. It's really happening what he said was happening. I could just try imagine the people that were running to try to catch the ark, beating on the ark while they could still reach it. Noah, let us in. Noah, we believe you. Let us in. It was too late. God shut the door. When the, the trumpet sounds and the church is raptured, it will be too late. But pastor, we came to church, we sat in church, we worshiped, but we didn't surrender our heart. We want to, we'll do it now, we want to go now. It's too late, it's too late. Church, he's coming again and he's coming for his church. So I wonder, as I said, when that happens, will anybody be in church? Who's going to run the service? I believe that all over the world, on that day, churches will be filled. But it's too late. It's too late. Watching and waiting. Explain what's going on in the world today. We think of it. We know what the Bible says about it. We've read the book of the Revelation. We know that horribleness that's going to happen during the tribulation time. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 tells us we, the church, the believers, are not going to be here for that, for that wrath. God, Christ Jesus, spared us, saved us from the wrath to come. We're going to be in heaven. So think of this. Do you have loved ones that are not, not yet saved? Do you have good friends that are not yet saved? Think about it. Take some time and read the book of the Revelation. See all the horrible things that are going to happen during that tribulation time. We don't want our loved ones to go through that. We don't want one of our loved ones to spend eternity in hell. Now, now is the time to try to reach them. Some would say, well, when I talk to my family, they get mad at me. I would rather have my family mad at me than to see them to go to hell. Ruth and I went through that with some of our family. 
Didn't want to have much to do with this. But I thank God today. Most all of my family is saved. I have one brother that's not. We're praying for him. I talk to him. I pray with him. One of these days, I believe he's going to give his heart to the Lord. What about you? Are you sharing with your loved ones? Are you praying for them? Jesus is coming. We must be ready. Father, I thank you tonight for the privilege of sharing this thought, this message. I'm asking, may the Holy Spirit quicken the truth of this message to every one of our hearts, to those that are listening in, if they're not ready, I'm asking, Lord, tonight that they would receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I'm asking that you would just speak to every one of our hearts, that we would be more persistent in sharing Jesus with our family, praying for them, encouraging them. And Father, may we see our family members come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I ask it tonight in Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. God bless.